That is the daughter of Jane Doe, number one, who talked to uh, Court TV today, just joined us on the air moments ago and spoke earlier with uh, our crime and justice reporter, Ted Rollins. Got a lot to talk about as it goes to what she said today on the air and in court. Let me bring in my think tank. Joining us from outside the courthouse in San Diego County, California, criminal defense attorney Andrew Cherkasky. Quentin G. Washington, former judge with the Fulton County Georgia Magistrate Court, is with us here in studio. Also joining us, Georgia juvenile court judge Ashley Wilcott and criminal defense attorney Philip Holloway, who's also a former prosecutor, also a former police officer, and the host of the wildly popular Sworn podcast. Great to have you all here. All right, quick Quick, let me go around the horn really quickly just to get a one-word reaction to Jane Doe, number one's daughter. We'll begin in San Diego. Andrew, give me, Andrew, give me one word to describe uh, Jane Doe, number one's daughter. Incredible. Judge Washington. Incredible. Judge Wilcott. Eh. Philip Holloway. A mistake. Mistake. Okay, let's start with you. A mistake by prosecutors to call her. Absolutely. She was a mistake by the prosecutors. Of course, I, I, I think that she was very brave and courageous for coming on and doing this interview. It's fascinating to hear. But the prosecution got out of the gate with this trial on the wrong foot. They stumbled out of the gate with Jane Doe, number one. So by bringing her daughter back in, Vinny, to testify, they simply reminded the jury of all of the problems. And uh, even her own daughter admitted that her mother wasn't completely truthful. Uh, for example, she said, you know, it's not true when she said she hadn't had a drink in 30 years. So if a jury hears that she's lying about part of it, they can infer that she might be lying about all of it. And all it takes is a reasonable doubt, as we all know. How about the fact, Phil, that she humanizes Jane Doe, number one. I mean, when she testifies on the witness stand, she's just some person who was hitchhiking. Now she's a mom, and she's going to be a grandmother. Does that do anything to bolster her credibility as a human? I think that was why the prosecution intended to bring her once they found out that she was available. So I do agree from a strategic point. You know, I can see why they might think that. But they should have vetted her a little bit more closely because... With the good comes the bad, because she reminds this jury of all of the problems associated with her mother's testimony. And they were doing pretty well with some other witnesses, but for the prosecution to then reverse course and say, oh, go back at to the beginning. Point, at and this point of the trial. Right, and, and, and let's go back and let's think about the problems that we had with our, our first witness, and let's try to explain those away. I just, again, think it was a mistake. Bill, I, you know, you're the one that's uh, questioning why prosecutors brought her in. Do the, are the pants enough of a reason here? No, they're not. The pants don't say whether or not she was sexually assaulted. They simply, it's just about the pants. She is, the, Jane Doe number one, Vinnie, is the gift to the defense that keeps on giving. Her daughter, her own daughter who loves her and wants to stand up for her, comes into court and tells this jury that her own mother lied under oath. She said that she does drink and that she lied when she said she hadn't had a drink in 30 years. If the jury uh, knows that she's capable of raising her right hand, swearing to tell the truth, yet telling a lie, they are entitled, as the judge will tell them at the end of the case, to discredit or not believe any of her testimony whatsoever. So I think she's the gift to the defense that just keeps on giving. Phil Holloway, what do you think of the fact that she kept this photo for 16 years? I think she kept it to remind herself that things can go wrong when you least expect them. And I also think that she is the witness the prosecution should have led with. She has been their strongest, among the strongest, uh, at least with regard to the actual rape allegations that we have seen in this trial. Uh, and she's going to be questioned about, you know, this delay uh, in her reporting. But this is not something new for her. She's told people uh, periodically throughout her life. She reported this to other people right after she says it happened. So she's going to do well, I think, uh, on cross-examination. I think the, the uh, jury probably is going to believe her testimony. She is some of the strongest evidence that we have heard so far. Phil, you're a former police officer. Some people don't like going to the police. Some people who have a history with police like she does just don't like to get involved with folks that's, in, in blue. That's entirely true, but guess what? That sushi restaurant, that's not the police. That is a safe place where someone who is under attack could presumably go and avoid that attack. So you have to look at her testimony as a whole and ask yourself, does it 
on balance have the ring of truth to it and a reasonable doubt is simply that. It's a doubt for which a reason can be attached. And if there's one juror on that jury that says, you know, this doesn't have the ring of truth to it because this whole thing with the fence and the sushi restaurant being just seconds away, it just kind of doesn't all add up. So at least with respect to Jane Doe, number one, I do think the prosecution still has a big problem and I don't see a conviction with respect to her.